Good morning. It's Tuesday, uh, January the 23rd. Hard to believe we're already in the spring 2024 semester here at HCC. Good to have you with us. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we are live at the HCC TV studios this morning. It's Tasty Tuesday. We've got some great guests coming your way, but my co-host every Tuesday, and he's usually here on time, which he is this morning. Benji Escobar joined us from his home, I believe. Benji, good to see you. Good to see you too, Todd. I am from my home, live and live and well. And you're are you heading to the station in a little while? Is it right after, on? yes. I just okay. ran into some troubles this morning, but got it taken care of and I'm heading to the station this morning. Good to hear that things are running smoothly at the Escobar <laughs> household. Uh, yeah. We uh, appreciate you joining us, Benji, this morning and everyone who's watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube. We're here just about every morning when HCC is in session, Mondays through Fridays, live at 10 a.m. So check us out. And Benji, they can watch us in social media anytime and also on HCC TV. Yes, we are live on the Houston Community College District Facebook page, not HCC, but Houston Community College District. We're also on YouTube, X, LinkedIn, and our own TV channel, HCC TV, where you can catch the rebroadcast of this show at uh, noon, 5, and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's right. Okay, Benji, you've got an interview coming up very shortly, but I want to right now introduce our second guest, and he is standing by live. We're talking about Brooks BB Bassler. He's the BB in BB's Tex Orleans. Uh, Brooks, good to have you with us on the show this morning. Great to be here, man. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Crawfish season's coming up. I know things are going to be a little different this year, but a lot of exciting things happening at BB's. We'll be with you shortly. Benji, I think you have a guest right now. It's going to be telling us about some things going on with our online college. Yes, we have Dr. Jerome Drain. He is the interim president of the HCC Online College. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Drain. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm happy to have you on the show today. And uh, let's begin with you telling us how the online college enrollment is doing this semester. Well, Benji, I am so delighted uh, to share uh, with our viewers that HCC Online is doing extremely well. So we have over 27,000 students that enroll in various programs as well as online courses. So things are looking very, very positive and very upbeat for the online college. Very exciting times here at ACC Online. Yes. And um, how has the college adapted to the current uh, educational landscape and what support services are available for the students? You know, so HCC Online has really uh, adapted well post-COVID. Uh, we know during COVID that there was a transition to online. So now what we see is that students are finding their way uh, back to our own campus uh, courses and classes and campuses, as well as online. Online is still a, uh, still a robust uh, offering for our students. 45% of all of our students uh, take courses online. Uh, so it's really, as I said before, an exciting time. Students do have services that are available to them. And it is really important for our students, students to take advantage of all of our advisors. So we have those pathway advisors that really want to work with our students to get them on the right path. Uh, we have various en enrollment management uh, officers that are also a part of our uh, HCC online uh, support staff. So if students have any needs, uh, they can reach out to our uh, teams and our teams are ready. Uh, they're uh, capable and they're, they're excited about really working with our students uh, for their uh, online course offer. So just exciting time. Yes, and myself as a student too, I mean, we do appreciate that HCC has an online way to do classes because, you know, sometimes with our busy schedule, you know, online is kind of the solution there to get some classes, you know, over with. Like, you know, yeah, we have our core classes that we have to for our degree, but, you know, we, we could take care of the English classes and our science classes and so, stuff like that. So it's always good to have that option of online. And it, it, it was never that way back in the day. But now, you know, with 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 how the Internet's working, it, it's great to have that. Um, so tell us uh, what advice I know. Um, uh, spring semester just started. There's some classes that are going to start like the late start classes. I mean, what advice do you have for some of the students starting that spring semester and how can they make the most of their college experience? Absolutely. So we do have second start classes that will start uh, on February 12th. Uh, so students still have the opportunity 
to register for uh, those classes. Uh, and there is a robust schedule uh, for, of classes. And as you said, Benji, in terms of the types of courses that students are able to take, the English courses, the history courses, the government courses, all of those courses that you mentioned were, are the core. So they have those opportunities to be able uh, to, to do that. Now, when students uh, sign up for these classes, we're not simply going to leave them uh, at, without supporting the students. So we have those supports that are in place. Uh, so we have what's known as Upswing. Upswing is our asynchronous tutoring um, platform whereby students are able to submit papers or they're able to submit math uh, questions that they have. Mm -hmm. And then our tutors working asynchronously are able to provide feedback to our students. Uh, we also have um, virtual tutoring. And this is a synchronous type of uh, tutoring, very similar to the way that we are right now, where students are able to interface directly with uh, our, our tutors. Uh, we have library services that are also a resource for our students. So students are able to work directly with our librarians if they have questions about cite citing uh, papers or how to get started in research. We have those resources available for our students. Of course, we have faculty office hours as well. So our faculty are, are um, also very supportive of our students and are willing to provide additional uh, support through their uh, faculty uh, office hours. So we mm -hmm. have classes that are available uh, starting uh, second start, and we have those support systems in place to support our students uh, as they're taking those online courses. Okay. And I know HEC is very proud of, of what the online college has become. And I know we've been getting uh, a few accolades and recognitions from uh, top organizations in the U.S. that, you know, select and, and kind of uh, review colleges in the United States. And we're one of the top ones. You know, that, that's, that's great to say that we have that here in Houston. I mean, can you tell us about some of those uh, recognitions we've gotten? Absolutely. So, uh we, uh, in 2023, we were recognized by Newsweek as one of the best online colleges. Uh, we're one of the largest online colleges. As I said, we have over 27,000 students that are taking online classes. Yeah. And if you just think about that for a second, that is mm -hmm. a large number. But what undergirds all of this really is a, a strong curriculum, dedicated faculty and staff. And that is what uh, really the various accolades that we get, that's part of it is that we have the infrastructure, we have the teams that are here uh, ready and uh, available to assist our students. So we're extremely excited about, about the accolades that we get. We will continue to get those. Um, there's just a lot of great positive momentum um, with the online college right now and students are reaping the benefits. So it's really, really just uh, exciting, great times. Okay. And I know the online college is like, it's ever evolving. It just keeps getting better and better. So what's on the horizon for the online college? So on the horizon, well, once again, we want to engage our students. So we are creating additional ways to engage our students. And there, we're, we will be able to engage our students uh, with our student life uh, resource. So we have an individual that will be a student life coordinator. And with the student life coordinator, they are essentially uh, tasked with providing community for our students that are online. So we will have virtual game nights. There will be fun online activities. We will have escape room opportunities. So really engaging those students uh, in, the, in the online environment in ways in which we have not done before. Uh, we have an honors college that is coming to HCC online. So we're really excited about mm -hmm. the honors college, which will kick off in uh, the fall of 2024, the, what, what, what is really, I think, an advantage for our students that are in the online environment, those students that uh, they, they're they successful. So they should be uh, recognized as being successful and being part of an honors college. So we will have the, the honors college uh, at HCC. And also we have a new home. So HCC online, uh, we're here at the district office. We will have a space on the ninth floor in the district office that is being renovated uh, especially for HCC online. And what's exciting about that is that we will have a uh, testing center, a certified testing center, whereby if students do need to have uh, a face-to-face -face test, they can come right to the HCC online on the ninth floor. 
and have uh, those uh, in place uh, in person tests uh, if need be. So just really excited about the opportunities. Also, we have digital access centers. So these digital access centers are located throughout uh, Houston City proper. And our students, as well as community members, are able to go to those digital access centers, check out laptops, and do their virtual work from those digital access centers. We are about engaging our students, engaging our students with the technology, engaging our students uh, academically, and supporting our students. So, so lots of good, good work going on in HCC Online. Well, I just want to say thank you for all the hard work you and your team have done to make sure that HCC Online is a, a, a great, basically a, a campus for, for all the students, um, and especially with these new offices opening up on the administration building. It's just going to get better and better. So thank you so much, Dr. Jerome Drain. He is the interim president of the HCC Online College, and we'll have your info on our post after the show. Thank you, Dan. All right. Thank you both. Now it is Tasty Tuesday. We've got a special guest joining us now. I've uh, got to say, I've been to the restaurant many times. Brooks Bassler, BB's of BB's Tex Orleans. Welcome to the show, Brooks. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, first, some congratulations in order. Now, Houston, uh, the Best of Houston Awards and Houston Chronicle, you guys won Best Seafood, Best All Around Restaurant, and of course, Best Crawfish as well this year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. You also, I know, uh, speaking of crawfish, I mean, I know I know by driving by the place, I lived down the street from you guys in the one in the Heights on uh, Studemont, went there many times, literally could walk to it from my house. Um, but I noticed crawfish season was special for y'all, especially Mardi Gras, because you'd have the tables outside, you'd have extra seating, you know, a lot more cars and traffic. This year is going to be a little different, though. Tell us about how you guys are dealing with crawfish, because I understand that there's a big shortage this year. Yeah, it's going to be a challenging year. There's there's, you know, there's no doubts about that, um, you know, for not only for for BB's, but for a lot of other restaurants, you know, that are that are focused on crawfish and uh, everybody else around there from Spice Guys to the farmers and distributors. It's going to be a hard year. Um, you know, our, our business model over the years has been built around crawfish because yeah. we get such a good bump. We do a great job with it. Um, you know, we imagine we probably sell more crawfish than anybody in, 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 in Houston, um, when it comes to restaurants. Um, so, you know, we're just have to figure things out. It's kind of, kind of part of who we are is just adapt and, and figure it out, but it's going to be an extraordinarily challenging year. There's no doubt about that. Are you thinking of delaying it for a while before you get into the crawfish season to see if the, the crops get any better? Or is that one of the strategies you're looking at? Yeah, you know, it's week to week for us, really. Um, we've been fortunate enough for the last five or six years, I believe we started on MLK Day. And that's kind of been our launch date that we always aim for. Um, this year, I just, we don't know, you know, there's just a lot of uncertainty. The crawfish business is, there's a lot of that going on. It's a live creature. Um, there's a lot of factors that are, that are leading into this. And to be honest, we just, no one really knows right now. Right. It's just too yeah. early to tell, but you do have a lot of other boiled offerings. Um, you got the shrimp, crabs, and then my, one of my favorite days, water creature Wednesdays. You have that going on too. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We're going to be selling, we're going to be focusing on a lot of shrimp right now until, um, you know, until we're, we're fortunate enough to be looking at crawfish. You also have in one thing is you, you, it is a fusion of, of Cajun and Tex-Mex as well. Maybe you can talk about some of the unique things on your menu. Yeah, you know, we've we've always branded as a little, we started as a po' boy shop um, on the corner of Montrose and Westheimer. And since the early days, we've unintentionally just kind of put a lot of influence from, I say a lot, but a little bit of influence from from Houston, uh, specifically um, some of the Mexican type food stuff. You know, I mean, we have queso on our menu. Um, on our po' boys, instead of using mayonnaise, uh, we use a chipotle infused mayonnaise. You know, one of my uh, favorite dishes is probably our Tex Cajun fries, which is this mound of French fries with you know, your roast beef debris and yeah. gravy, which is very much New Orleans. And then we just cover it with queso. You get the Tex-Mex in there. We have these Cajun empanadas. It is a nice little fusion of, of our, our Tex Orleans kind of uh, stuff. We have a fajita beef po' boy. And, um, you know, we have all the traditional stuff as well. You know, our, our backbone is, is Cajun New Orleans, but we do kind of tweak it. I'm originally from New Orleans, so po' boys are special to me. And uh, I got to say, you know, when I I always when I go to places, 
I judge them on their roast beef po' boys. Hey, yeah, uh, you and should. The roast beef debris, <laughs> man, that's the bomb over there. Is that uh, one of your big sellers? Because I know that was one of the first, I think it was the first thing I had when I went there because we didn't go. You know, it's been our menu since day one. It's something we're very proud about uh, because it's, a, it's as authentic as you can find here uh, in Houston to a Northern style roast beef debris yeah. po' boys. Um, surprisingly enough, a lot of, a lot of people just don't know what it is, you know? So it's not like leading the charts on, as one of our, it doesn't sell like a shrimp pole, like a fried shrimp pole. Yeah. Let's put it that way. But man, in my opinion, it's, it's the best sandwich we have. Tell us a little bit about your background and uh, some of the history of BB's. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm from central Texas, uh, Rockdale, Texas. My mother, um, I have a lot of family scattered throughout South Louisiana in between Lafayette and Morgan city. Um, I came here to U of H on athletic scholarship and and started working. I was 18 and never left the business. I just stayed into it, graduated, stayed in the business. Um, shortly after, I opened up BB's with intentions of um, – I was always eating late. I was, I, was, I was always a late night eater, and I was disappointed in the options around the city of on really qu high-quality late-night dining options. So – um, I like to say that before we were a, a po' boy shop, we were a late night dining restaurant on the corner of Montrose and Westheimer. That's kind of what we opened as. Just happened to be selling food that I'm very familiar with, um, New Orleans, kind of Cajun, Texas type stuff, you know. Um, that's how we started. It was a late night dining po' boy shop, open all night, and then didn't sell crawfish in the early days. However, uh, when we opened the Heights location, the phone just started ringing. Hey, you got crawfish. You got crawfish. This is in 2010. You got crawfish. And finally, I said, we have crawfish. We're going to figure this out. And um, we started selling crawfish uh, at our Heights location and started just doing it a couple of days a week. And then next thing you know, we realized it was we need to do it all day, every day. We right. could have crawfish. And then from there, it just opened up a lot of doors for us. And how many locations do you guys have now? We have 14 total, 12 in the Houston area and two in San Antonio, actually. Incredible. I and mean, that's, yeah. you know, um, I one thing I've noticed, and it seemed like, you know, you guys were uh, one of the, the anchor restaurants in the Heights and that corner. But then, you know, Fitzgerald's went away. They made some parking over there. And then you had all these expansions of restaurants in that little area. They even upgraded an old ice house, which is like across the street from you. You know, it's now it's like a bougie ice house, you know, yeah. but I mean, it's really cool. But uh, cool. that area has grown so much. Is there more or less a camaraderie with the restaurants in that area as opposed to, you know, we all are in this together? Yeah, I would say so. You know, it's a, that area over here in the Heights, it's very destination. Uh, we pull kind of the whole city and people will come and just make a an afternoon or, or a whole day out of it. And they'll park at BB's and start at BB's and, you know, go to the ice house, go watch yeah. some sports, you know, go to upscale liquor bar, come back to BB's late night and eat and go home. So it's kind of a all day deal. And uh, yeah. yeah, we all know each other and try to help each other. We're all different. And you never know who you're going to run into when you go to that location or really any of your locations. I mean, I've ran into uh, Case Keenum, had a yeah. picture taken with him. I've uh, sat next to a uh, I was in news years ago and uh, covered a congresswoman. Um, she was on city councilman, you know, city council. Then she was there one night. You just really never know who you were going to run into at your place. It seems like uh, you, you do attract a, a large crowd there. Some famous yeah. people as well. Yeah, yeah, we we do. JJ Watt was in there when he was a rookie. Of course, no one really knew who he was. Um, I recognized him like they do now. Yeah. Um, Jose Altuve when he came in, un completely unknown, had a little hat on with his agent, and um, I was actually in the restaurant. And I didn't even know his agent told me I ran into his agent in Mexico City. He's like, I was in there with Jose Altuve. I'm like, what? how did I miss that? <laughs> I like, Beyonce, has she stopped? Low by hat, you? man. It's just like you know, he's a pretty un unassuming guy. If he's especially. You know, uh, in his early days. How about um, Beyonce? Has she ever been by you? She has. Yeah. 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 Her and Jay-Z both came in late That's night um, after her show a couple of years ago. Very cool. Um, and uh, tell us a bit about your culture at BB's, because I know it's something you're proud of. You know, I mentioned uh, Figure It Out. Um, that's kind of a lot of, of, of uh, who we are. You know, my grandma's very much the... Um, a big inspiration behind the restaurant, you know, sir. So our purpose is uh, make Mama proud. Um, and we figure that kind of relates to everybody. 
uh, whether it's your mom or your grandma or your aunt or whatever influential female figure you have in your in your life, you don't want to disappoint them. Right. And, and we try to instill that same thought process in our employees and, and keep it simple. It's something that everybody can relate to from our dishwasher, you know, uh, up to the to the CEO. And just it's a pretty simple concept to understand is make your make mom all proud. And, you know, we 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 try to live and breathe it every day. It's our guiding you know, it's our it's our rules is our, our core values are our, our guiding principles. We try to make our decisions based around that and hire around that as well. Momo has a dish on the menu as well, doesn't she? She has she has a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. she does. Pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Brooks Bassler. He is the founder of BB's Tex Orleans, our Tasty Tuesday guest, a proud Coug as well. Brooks, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it, Todd. Take care. Have a good one. All right, Benji, there's another restaurant you can take your girlfriend to. I know we, we already go there. there. We are we already go there. You go there. All right. We hit up the Montrose and Westheimer location. He's not wrong about the late night spots. That's one of the best late night spots in Houston. I will say that. I've got to say, <laughs> I think I spent a few late nights at the one in the in the Heights. <laughs> a few times. Maybe, maybe a few times. Anyway. All right, Benji, we got a few announcements to go to before we wrap up today's show. Uh, one of them is happening uh, tomorrow. Wednesday, January the 24th. It is a business launch and growth web financial webinar. Uh, attending one of these virtual workshops is a prerequisite for applying to the HCC business plan competition. Big deal with that. You got to take this as a prerequisite. Uh, it's Wednesday, January 24th. Tuesday, January 30th. Check our post after the show for more information on that. And uh, managing change is coming up tomorrow as well. Yeah, this is a virtual workshop from... Uh Co or C O P P, uh, HCC faculty and staff are looking to thrive in a changing workplace amidst today's transitions. Can attend the virtual course Managing Change from the College Office Professionals Program or COP. Uh, it is assigned to uh, reinforce skills to take charge of what you can control while managing managing what you can't. This will take place Wednesday, January twenty fourth. Uh, from 9 a.m. to noon uh, on a WebEx. So check out our post uh, after the show for more info. Okay, HCC Tax Days. You need to get your taxes done? Well, HCC's Career Services and Student Life have joined forces to help students learn how to maximize their Form 1040 educational credits. This is very informative. It's a virtual session, January the 31st, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., and uh, we'll have a link in our post after the show. Uh, also, there's a vocal master class that's happening at the Northwest Spring Branch campus. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, we have Dr. Eric McClunsky, uh, yeah, professor. Yeah. Who was it? McCluskey. McCluskey, there you go. McCluskey, yeah. professor of voice and opera at Lamar University, will give a master class to HCC vocal students. Lamar's collaborative pianist, Dr. Michael McAndrew will provide an accompaniment accompaniment uh, for the students. Company <laughs> Okay, there you go. That one. Uh, Friday, this will take place Friday, February sixteenth, from two to four p.m. at the HCC Northwest Spring Branch Performing Arts Center Theater. The registration is not necessary. Everyone is welcome. So check out our post after the show for more info. I will definitely be there. You definitely, know, yeah, soon. definitely. I think you're still right now. You're mentally at BB's late night. Having yeah. a sandwich. A <laughs> boy, I should say. Right. All right. Northeast Exhibition, The Art of Simulated Existence. This uh, collection of paintings and drawings is by faculty member Thomas G.H. Dorsch. And that is Thursday through April the 5th. HCC's North Line Gallery, the North Line Gallery. Uh, artist reception coming up, uh, let's see, Wednesday the 20th. Well, no, is it tomorrow? Wednesday? I think it might be tomorrow. Well, we'll have some information in our post after the show. Uh, also, spring classes have begun here at Benji, but there's still time to register to get a full course load in this semester. Of course, yes. HCC's 16-week spring classes have begun, but students can still register for those as well as second start classes, which begin February 12th. All courses are either in person, online, or hybrid, just like we had our online college president. Uh, you have online at any time, so there's no times listed. There's online on a the schedule. 
hybrid, in-person, hybrid lab. We have all the options for you here at HCC. To learn more about HCC program start dates and options to cover costs, please visit hccs.edu slash apply. Again, let me stress it too, hccs.edu slash apply. All right. Thank you. Okay. Tomorrow, Dr. Michael Edwards, you know, Dr. Edwards, he is, was the, uh, uh, well, one time he was over communications. Great guy yeah. to work with. Now wow. he's the president of our HCC's Northeast College. Uh, he's going to mm-hmm. be on the show as he's welcoming students back. And coming up for Thursday Family Fun Day, we'll host the Houston Botanic Garden and hear all about the spectacular lantern display to celebrate the Lunar New Year. That's coming mm. up Thursday, Benji. So yep. that's something you could probably take your girlfriend to as well. That's it. Yeah. The Botanic Garden. That's on the list. Yeah. You never on the list. That's on, on the list. list. All right. So you're headed to the to the station soon, right? Yes. Like right now. Right. Chris be just careful. texted me too. He's like, what's your location? So. Yeah, be, you know, be, be careful in traffic out there. All right, folks. Uh, thanks for being here today. We're live tomorrow, 10 a.m. up to the minute. We'll see you then.